Hey guys, today is the first day of October and we are going to kick off our Croctober series. So I'm actually starting with dessert, but I'm gonna be sharing a lot more yummy goodness. The rest of this month, every single Friday, I'm going to share a video with a few different recipes, all cooked in my crock pot or slow cooker. So today, like I mentioned, we're going to start with our sweet treats. I've got three to share with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys to my crock pot and we're gonna start whipping up these delicious desserts. This crock pot a pumpkin and cheesecake is going to be so good. We are going to start by adding our dry ingredients to a bowl. So I just added in one and three quarter cups of flour, one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, and go ahead and whisk that up. I am using my KitchenAid for this, but you do not need a stand mixer. Now we are adding in half a cup of vegetable oil, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, one and two eggs, and a can of a pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, but a pumpkin puree. Now I'm just going to beat this until everything is well combined. All right, you guys are probably gonna be here laundry going on in the background, but I've got my crock pot. I actually have it lined with some parchment paper. And now that my cake mixture is done, I'm just going to pour it all in here. All right, so the pumpkin and cake mixture is in here. Now let's make the cream cheese mixture. Okay, back to our KitchenAid. I went ahead and rinsed it out trying to not use a ton of dishes if possible because if you've been with me for a few weeks you know we do not have a dishwasher and you know why the crock pot is in the laundry room <laughs> so i'm adding in one eight ounce package of cream cheese a quarter cup granulated sugar one and two teaspoons of vanilla extract and one egg and we are just going to beat this until it is nice and creamy all right, oops, sorry, I thought I had press record and I didn't, but I just added the cream cheese on top, the cream cheese mixture on top of the pumpkin cake mixture, and now, oh no, get back here, buddy, and now I'm just going to spread it all over the top as best as I can, and I kind of dipped my spoon into the cake mixture on purpose to get the cream cheese kind of down in there, and then I'm gonna take a butter knife and I'm just gonna swirl it around even more in there. So some of the cake is getting mixed into the cream cheese. Okay, I can get my lid on. And you can cook this on high for two hours, but I've always cooked like a cake mixture for the most part on low. I just don't want to risk it burning. Another reason why I like to use the parchment paper, you could lose a, use a crock pot liner as well, but the parchment paper makes it a little easier for you to get it out in more of one piece instead of having to spoon it out. So I've got the parchment paper and I'm gonna cook it on low for three to four. Around the three hour mark, I will do the toothpick test and see if that's done, but sometimes it does take up to four hours. But on high, you would only need about two. Okay, three hours is up. Oh my gosh, this smells really really good so I'm just gonna do the little toothpick test and see if it needs a little longer the cake is definitely done let's see how bouncy I think the cream cheese needs a little bit longer so I'm going to put the lid back on and set my timer for 30 minutes and check it then okay so one reason for the parchment paper is to pull it out easily and two so it doesn't burn and stick to the crock pot itself so I did go ahead and pull it out and bring it into my kitchen. I have a little fold out table in here and that way you guys can just see it better. And I still have laundry going so I didn't want it to be super loud. So I did leave it in for not a full 30 minutes, maybe 25, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. I've had it sitting here for just a couple minutes and I'm gonna plate it, that way you guys can see the inside. All right, so I just got a whole slice out so I could show it to you guys, but definitely done. It does need to cool a little bit but there's 
a good look at it. I am going to put this in the refrigerator because this is really good cold. You could eat it now. It's nice and warm, um, but because of the cream cheese, I think this would be really, really good, nice and cold. So I'm going to get this in just a little container and pop it in the fridge before we enjoy it. My husband and I will probably go ahead and split this just while it's nice and warm, but super yummy and fairly easy pumpkin cheesecake in the crock pot. Did you know that you can use your crock pot to make no bake cookies? Well, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is. We are going to mix up a half a cup or one stick of butter melted one and a half cups of granulated sugar, a half a cup of milk, a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, and one a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm just gonna take a spoon and mix these all together until well combined. All right, I've got my crock pot. We're not in the laundry room today because I actually already have dinner cooking in the laundry room. So we are out in the kitchen on a little fold out table, but I am using a liner in my crock pot just to help with cleanup. I'm adding in my chocolate mixture. Just gonna spread that out so it is all over the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to add on top of the chocolate mixture. I'm not going to stir this in. I'm just going to spread it around on the top three cups of old fashioned oats. All right, last cup. I'm just kind of sprinkling it all over the top. Again, I'm not going to mix this in. All right, and then I have about half a cup of peanut butter and I'm just going to just plop this all over the top, just kind of pushing it off my spoon in different areas. I'm not mixing this in either. Okay, now to get the top on. So I'm really just using the crock pot to heat up that chocolate mixture. So I do not have to cook this for very long. I'm going to put it on high and I'm just gonna cook it for one hour. Okay, time is up. Can you hear them bubbling? So now I can mix it all together. Okay, I do have two cookie sheets that I put some parchment paper on top and I'm just using a little cookie scoop and I should be able to get about a dozen on each one. All right, so I was able to get just a few more than a dozen on each, and now I'm gonna put these in my fridge and let them chill for one hour. Okay, one hour later in your fridge, and they are nice and solid for you to eat. These are so good. We make these almost every year, and making them in the crock pot definitely just is a win for me since I don't have a stove top right now. So I've got them in a container and these will be great kept in the fridge so they stay nice and put together. And you can enjoy these for a couple weeks. The sun is going down but I still have time to make a yummy dessert for my family tonight. All right, so those eight apples I cut up, I peeled four of them and I sliced them in not too small, but little slices here you can see. So I did peel half of them, but I did leave the peel on for the other half. So if you guys don't like the peel, go ahead and peel them all. It's not gonna hurt anything. But again, I just decided to do a mixture. I peeled four, I left four peels on. To my bowl of apples, I'm going to add in some cinnamon. Maybe do half a teaspoon. I actually like cinnamon, so I'm doing more like one. So it just depends. All you really need is a half three quarter cup of flour, half a cup of old fashioned oats, one cup of brown sugar, and then optional, you can add raisins, about a third, a fourth a cup, as well as walnuts. I'm not gonna add the raisins. The last time I made something like this with raisins, my kids weren't huge fans of it, but I am going to add the walnuts. So I just put in about a quarter cup of those. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good stir and make sure that my apples are coated with all of these ingredients. Now I'm adding in three quarter cup of apple juice and I'm just kind of pouring it all over the top. All right, you guys, I forgot an ingredient here. So 
I'm adding in about a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm going to stir this up again so that is coated over all of my apples. All right, back to my bowl. I'm adding in half a cup of flour. There's a little bit of brown sugar left from when I used this previously, but that's okay. Half a cup of brown sugar. Just a little bit of salt, about a quarter teaspoon. A quarter cup of oats. And lastly, four tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, I'm going to mix this up until it is nice and crumbly. Okay, I'm just going to sprinkle my mixture on top. Time to get the lid on. And we are going to cook on low for two and a half hours. All right, this is definitely nice and hot. Can you hear the bubbling? <laughs> I just turned it off. Most of the time I put things to keep warm, but, but this is going to stay hot for quite a while. So you guys can hopefully see there how soft the apples are. It smells so good. Now all of my kids are gonna have theirs with vanilla ice cream. And I also have some caramel syrup that I'm gonna put on theirs, but me, I'm actually not a huge fan of vanilla or chocolate ice cream. I like the flavored ones, but not the plain ones. So I'm just gonna go with some Ready Whip. Wow, that's a lot more than I thought, but it's gonna be oh so good. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed these three recipes. If you love using your crock pot and are excited to get some more recipe ideas, give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget, I am going to be sharing a crock pot video for Crocktober every single Friday this month. So if you are not already subscribed and you don't want to miss out on any of them, hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.